Hey there. So we're gonna replay Divinity Original Sin. I was kind of thinking about this game and it's just like, oh yeah, that's a game I really do enjoy that is actually really fun. choose a pre-made character that has kind of their own thing going on. But I'm going to make an original character. Busting into my office right now. <sighs> Hang on. <sighs> and not closing the door. I don't mean to be a jerk, but like if you're gonna open the damn door, then you need to close the damn door. Nice try. You're not trying to escape, are you? Better luck next time. So we're kind of going with a custom class where we can conjure our own, uh, we can conjure elemental totems, but we're predominantly a fighter for now. Leech is useful because we'll be standing in blood pretty regularly. Like Mystic Soldier.
Now we can play as this character, or if we want, we can play as an undead version of her, although we don't get to look as cool uh, if we do that. Now the thing with the undead is that everything about them is reversed, so healing spells actually hurt us, and poison spells actually heal us. Um, so what do you think? Should we play as a flesh and blood character, or should we... Someone tried to send me a spam message. Um, no undead? Okay. I'm going to show you really well. No, actually, I can't do that, because... Oh, no, that's not the one I want to push. I was going to show you what they look like, but I would have lost everything I made, so. It all happened like I knew it would. A single drop of sauce. Flies to honey. The monsters swarmed. The rebel panicked. The carnage began. And the magisters pointed their fingers at me. Just as I'd planned. I was shackled and collared. And sent to Fort Joy. I'd come here to kill Godwoken. But instead, I became part of their story. So there's normal magic. Still a bit groggy, are we? Don't worry. The sedative will wear off soon enough. Easy now. No need to hurry. Get your bearings and report to me upstairs. So it it wasn't a dream after all. Fun fact, if we were undead, we could actually talk to that skull. And he kind of is like, ah, you're such a dumbass for getting caught. So I'm going to go through the little tutorial, because it has been a while since I've played. This game is really praised because you can do a lot of stuff. Or food. I just toggled some stuff on. So, one thing I really like about this company, Larian, which is the name of the company that makes this game, they... people had a series of complaints about the game, and they actually came back in and patched them and worked with 
the makers uh, and the fans to come up with in-game solutions. So those things I just toggled on were the fixes. So like, here, hang on one second. I just want to move something really fast. There, I just moved my stream overlay. So now I can actually talk to this animal. Her fluffy coat, the sheep eyes you balefully. Her rectangular eyes like letterboxes to the void. With one sharp hoof, she kicks you right in the shin. Fresh meat. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Clump. Banded like a chicken's leg, too. Poke the sheep's belly with your toe and remark that she's got more meat on her than you that do. so... But look at the flies. Ban wisdom. Flies know when a creature will die. And it's around your head they're buzzing, not mine. With two shakes of her stumpy tail, the sheep turns away from you to peruse her hay-filled manger. So we didn't have that ability before, but thanks to the the tweaks I turned on, we now do. And we can also... Cool. So now we move faster. Because that was another thing a lot of people complained about, is you move really freaking slow in this game. Whoa. Skill. Yeah, I don't have a ton of abilities right now. That's what we're wearing right now. Not much. But we did get a pocket knife, which is better than nothing. You there. Come here. Before you can even touch the lever, you hear a sniff and snort behind you as the snoring magister mumbles himself awake. One bloodshot eye opens, and then another. Is my shift over? Are you here to relieve me? Wait, you're no magister. You're a sorcerer! What are you doing here, filthy lizard? Choose your words carefully. My fists ache. What? Those idiots can't even walk straight without mucking it up. <laughs> was it Ricks? <laughs> I bet it was Ricks. You can't just leave the prisoner alone, though. I heard he might be the one causing trouble upstairs. Let's remark on the sturdiness of the cell bars. The prisoner is not going anywhere. If it's Damn. all the same, I think it's best he comes with me. Some offense intended. You hear that, Emoir? We're taking a walk. We 
You're gonna want to stand right here. Hurry up, soldier. We haven't got all day. Somebody will have to take the blame for this. It won't be me. So now he's betraying me. Like a prick. But that's fine. Because we've got tricks of our own. So, remember, there's two kinds of magic. There's magic that anyone can do, and there's magic that only certain sorcerers can do. And it's that source magic, the ones that only certain ones can do, that they're worried about. So, the collar I'm wearing prevents me from using that really powerful magic but I can still use normal magic. It pays to steal just about everything in this game. Actually, I want that barrel. Because with that barrel... Well, we'll use it later. You can poison your weapons with the barrel. I would take that candle that's on the desk. Ah! Need to do that. <laughs> RPG logic. Quick rest while I'm on fire. I'll regain health faster. Was it? Not sure what I got poisoned on, but okay. <sighs> and I'm back where I started. Don't. Nowhere to go but up. If I remember, yeah, a lot of this stuff is pretty... Like, there's nothing here. Oh, my. This 
smelling suits are strong stuff. Ah, no, no, no. I'm still getting used to the controls. There you are. Not too tight, I hope. The collar, I mean. Oh, not to worry. Every dog has to get used to its leash. In the meantime, your next stop will be Magister William. All passengers have to be registered in the ship's manifest, and he's the chap in charge of the logs. You'll find him on the other side of this deck, in the officer's quarters. You had a long dream about a ship sailing the River of the Dead. I'm not dead, am I? You're alive, and you're having a conversation. You are on a ship, of course, but luckily for us both, we're merely sailing the plain old sea. Index fingers pressed to her lips, she pauses a moment to give you a scrutinizing gander. My word, you do seem a bit befuddled, don't you? Perhaps I was a bit too generous with that sedative. Oh, well, I'm sure you'll soon gather your wits. Most likely. Eventually. In the meantime, all you need to know is that we're en route to Fort Joy. A new life awaits. And if you're a particularly good girl, perhaps a cure as well. An end to source. For good. Good gods! There's... there's been a murder here! So, standing in blood... And because I'm standing in blood, I'm getting healed. Ugly sight, isn't it? Burns me up this happened under our protection. We're extremely lucky no void walk and followed the source that did this. Ask why she's letting you so close to the crime scene, for all she knows she you're the killer. You with a mirthless smile. I was on duty in your room when the murder happened. You were asleep the whole time. Didn't even stir. You're one of the only indisputably innocent people on the ship. Unless you can commit murder in your sleep, of course. Uh, because I'm a lizard, I can say I do not hail from the House of Dreams. When I sleep, I truly Figured sleep. Figured as much. Listen, I could use someone to keep their ears open among the passengers. Sometimes they clam up in front of a uniform. Bring me a good lead, and I'll throw in a shiny gold coin for you. How about that? So, anything interesting for me? So, one but thing we are going to do that I know. Light. A young magister stands pale and silent. Is we want to talk to all these people, because... Well, I won't spoil why. My mum is afraid of lizards. I'm not. I think you're neat. I'd be happy if I had a tail. Oh, there you are. <clears throat> Wife. Would you please tell this very charming gaggle of not at all brat like babes that I am by no accounts this loser woman, nor do I sing, in fact. I'm deathly, deathly allergical. Play along and take her arm with a grin. Tell the children they must be mistaken. How very correct you are, spouse of mine. Madame Josephine Gribbles de Peeve refuses to be confused with anyone else. What? What's so funny? Her pinched face cracks into a great grin, and she shoos the children away from her with a laugh. Yeah, okay, you found me out. Go on and git, and maybe I'll sing you something when I'm good and ready. She turns to you, dark-eyed and dirty-haired, and smiles flatly. Gotta keep ourselves entertained, haven't we? Shake your hand so you are low, you I presume. Seem right. Do you know anything about nope. the murder? Trying not to find anything out either. Ignorance is bliss. The utterer, the better. Suddenly, her I shall eyes take cloud to an unnatural black. 
grayish veins run down her face and her mouth tightens into a cruel sneer. As quickly as they came, the clouds clear. She smiles as though no change came over her. Good luck, Chief. You think me mad? Mad? No. Insufferable? Surely. Name? I'll tell you if quiet long enough. Not so fast. Name? The Divine. Well, you aren't here. You'd end up a prison guard, Vic. That right? I always knew you'd turn out rotten, Ben Mezd. Your kind always hung closest to A broad empire. dwarf sits totally upright on the bench, eyes closed, palms face up on his knees. His beard is a cascade of meticulous plaits, each one braided through with golden medallions. He raises an eyebrow as you approach, but doesn't open his eyes. Listen up, Ghetto. You hear that? What am I supposed to be here? Of course. A wave of sound washes over you. The unintelligible chatter of your shipmates. The groaning of wood from floor to ceiling. The boom, crash, and crackle of waves around you. Complaints from the sea itself. And? Sea sounds angry. The fellow cocks his ear, listening. That isn't anger. It's... He cocks his ear to the other side, then smiles. Anticipation. She senses something. I'd hold on to my breeches if I were you, mate. That's all you hear, though. Listen close. Close my eyes and listen yeah, harder. Man, just like that. Squeak. Aha. Never thought you'd end up a prison. His eyes snap open as his countenance breaks into an expression of joy. One great paw claps you on the back. The other catches you before you lose your footing. There. You heard it, didn't you? I knew it. I knew it. Aye, this is good news, ghetto. Good news. What's it supposed it's to be? The wheel. The wheel. Don't you see, you beautiful idiot? Squeaks whenever the helmsman jerks it clockwise, which means we're heading east. Burn my beard. That means if we've been traveling for... Yes, only 10.34 nautical miles to Fort Joy. Shouldn't talk like that about such a magnificent ah, beard. So you've eyes as well as ears, eh? You'll go far, mate. Even here. Why are you so excited to be at Fort yeah, Joy? No, indeed, ghetto. But that ain't my final destination. The dwarf leans back from the table and strokes his beard, gold medallions jingling merrily. His eyes roll over to you. That'll be all. Thank you kindly, ghetto. We may want to find him again in Fort Joy. Well, well, what have we here? A fresh face in this stale hell. Let's size you up, shall we? See if you'll do. The lizard looks you up and down, like a farmer would a fetching horse. All of a sudden, he grips you firmly by the chin, with the intent of inspecting your teeth. Let's humor him. There's some discoloration, but I've seen worse. After all, one can't expect to find prime merchandise on a squalid little ship like this. Now then, to business. You will answer me three questions. The first one is this. Can you cook? Sure. Oh, music to my beleaguered stomach. On to the second question. Can you knit, weave? In short, uh, Taylor? Nah. Stick a thumb through one of the holes in my garb and say they provide a nice cool Yes, breeze. I can tell from your vagabond chic, a bag is as good as a shirt kind of style, I shouldn't be getting my hopes up. On then to my final query. Have you the ability to administer the upkeep of one's personal appearance? The delicate art of cosmetics is what I'm after. Yes, I know the difference between combs, powders, and perfumes. The very basics, then. 
I suppose that's a start. So, three questions asked, three questions answered. Let's evaluate, shall we? As per your own testimony, you can cook and groom, but you have the fashion sense of a monkey in a clown suit. Still, beggars can't be choosers. So without further ado, I offer you my sincerest congratulations. As of now, you are my slave. I'm gonna punch you in the you face. You come to terms with the fact that you've half a mind, full stop. Rain in your impertinence, will you? I'm a fair man, but I won't spare the rod. Anyway, you may leave me for a moment. We'll go over your duties once we reach Fort Joy. Now shoo! Picking us off one by one. Forgive me, Kin. Were that I had more than gruel to serve, if I'd more than cornmeal and rotting roots, I'd concoct something more fitting. Meanwhile, the Magisters feast on honeyed meat behind this very wall. <gasps> the indignity. I'm busy watching for clues, sorcerer. Go take your sob story somewhere else. A scruffy man lounges against the wall with scarred arms folded. A sly smile playing on his face, he stares across at the Magister guarding him. Noticing you, he straightens and beckons for you to come closer. Watch your back, new fish. There's a murderer on board, and I'd bet three months' pay it's this trampy fan. Rolling his eyes at the Magister's warning, the man named Ifan beckons again. For some reason, your instinct, your soldier instincts cry out to salute Ifan. So Ifan you do. Ifan seems amused at the gesture, but he bats your arm down from the salute when the Magister sees what you're doing. You served? Indeed, I served my Arm empire. My word. Bravest warriors on Rivalon. Served Lucian myself. A long, long time ago now. Long before Source became a reason to leash us like dogs. He leans in and adjusts your collar with a sharp tug, balancing its weight so it no longer presses unpleasantly on your neck. He winks. Pinches less that way, right? Hocking a phlegmy gobbit in your general direction, the sullen magister settles back to his task of glowering at Ifan. And now, you. So we do have to talk to all these people before uh, a conversational trigger, so that's why I'm doing we so. We used to know each other, more's the pity. I was his commander many, many, many moons ago. Isn't that right, Vic? Standing far back from Ifan, the tight-faced Magister draws one finger across his throat in an elaborate fashion, but says nothing. Ifan grins, flashing pointed white teeth. Same as he was at 14 years old. Only difference is somebody gave him a bigger sword and now he's Johnny Big Pants. What did you do to find yourself at the mercy of your own support? Long story. Maybe I'll tell you about it in the joy. Away from... Ifan performs an elaborate pantomime of keeping quiet, one finger in front of his lips, as he leans back against the wall. <sighs> My least favorite and character. Sits tucked away in a dark spot, lazily rolling dice onto the surface of a barrel. They sound like the dry cackling of an old witch. Snake eyes. She chuckles. I bet that's just what they'll look like. She shakes yeah, her enough. head. Game for one, I'm afraid. Rolling dice? Deciding fates. Can you read the future in cow entrails as well? Quite seriously. <laughs> Not the future, no. But I can read the past in flesh. One of the perks of being an elf, you see. I'm quite good at it, too. I could lick your arm and tell you how you spent the night before last. Shall I? Go for your it. arm a vigorous stroke of the tongue, efficient like a cat grooming. Hmm. You were in a cellar with other sorcerers. As everyone lay sleeping, you lay awake thinking of someone back home. A very special someone. You were reminiscing. <laughs> About the things you used to do together. Of You're course quite it right. is. The truth's right there, skin deep. But don't you worry, darling. Your secret's safe with me. 
I don't lick and tell. She smiles contemptuously. Just a kitten in a corner, aren't we? So in this setting, elves have this cannibalistic ability where if they eat someone's flesh, they can learn about them. So now that we've spoken to every... oh, almost every... The elf is reading a volume of Cranley Hubert's famous encyclopedia. He looks up, his big round eyes scanning your body, absorbing every detail. He reaches out, flicks a finger against one of your scales, and rubs his chin. Fascinating. He sits back and returns to his book, flicking quickly from page to page, completely oblivious to your presence. I shall reach over and ruffle his hmm? hair. What purpose did that serve? Was that a greeting? Was it... Oh, oh dear. I seem to have crossed some cultural taboo. How difficult. You have my apologies, lizard. Perhaps I should demand the same from those red-cloaked humans. They laid their hands on me more than once. What's with the book? Is it really all I that good? I do not believe I've been drawn anywhere. It is a quaint little read, but it has its faults. It is simultaneously too detailed and insufficient. I know the beginning of this tale and the end, but I am rather missing the middle. Tell me, what do you know of your... our world's history? I shall use my mystic side and explain Rivalon's history is the battle between the Source and Void, good and evil, light and dark. Oh, please. I have no interest in that. Your books are too full of it already. No. I want to know about the Celestial. I want to know about your gods. This text tells me that they created all creatures, but nothing of what came before. Where did these gods come from? Who are their people? Where are the others of their kind? I've often wondered, but I don't have any answers. <sighs> of course you don't have any useful information. Why did I expect anything else? Now please, run along. I have a world to decipher. Register, ma. Good, good. Magister Williams has just about done with the last passenger. You faring okay so far? Do you actually care? Seems Voidwell can dog your heels like a shadow. That's no way to live, is it? You'll see. We're gonna help you. You head on in now. Williams will get you short at fast. Thought you'd end up in prison Standing at the center of the room, you spot a sorcerer haughtily eyeing a pair of nervous-looking magisters. They keep their crossbow trained upon her as she's being interrogated by an officer. So you admit it, then? You murdered that poor fella? Yes, I did. But of course, that was only the beginning. She turns her head and looks you straight in the eye. There are others whose lives must end. Good God! The woman's mad! You there, sorcerer, go and fetch Magister Siwan. We need to do more than collar this maniac. We need to shackle her hands and feet. What do you mean there are others whose lives it must means end? your journey draws to a close. Do stick around for its finale, though, because... She reaches for her collar and simply removes it. I'm just about to create a scene. Subdue her, man, quickly! If she casts source, the Void Woken will come. They'll end us all. She smiles with wicked satisfaction. Precisely.
actually will do. Knife on a stick and a makeshift shield. So the reason I was talking to everyone before is because the guard people are now all dead. And if I didn't talk to them first, besides it not triggering the uh, conversation, I miss out on all of the loot that they've got. them, I should have some actual decent stuff to wear. So, nothing amazing, but better than I had. Sarah Lee, conscious just yet. Instead, we're better off doing some looting. Oh, I remember this. That's right. Okay, I can't get in there just yet. Just about environmental effects. Need to get off this wreck and quick. Pick up the gold cup because it's actually pretty valuable. Damn! That doesn't bode well. Upwards and upwards. Grace, who was that howling? He eyes the collar circling your neck and reaches a hand towards his blade. Another sorcerer! What's going on here? What's be go like What's you happening? No, mutiny. Did that witch fix your collar too? I almost died at that woman's hands. Go on then. Find a place to hide and stay there. So they're just cowering and being little bitches. Ooh, just found a hundred and four gold. That'll be useful. through the door and are suddenly face to face with an undead. His skull is bizarrely angular and a glorious jewel sits in the middle of his forehead. The skeleton is quickly leafing through a volume of Cranley Hubert's famous encyclopedia, muttering to himself. No, no, no. What damn fools record knowledge on a pulped tree? It catches fire. It turns into must when wet. It cannot even resist acid. No wonder they're so bloody ignorant. 
The skeleton looks up and notices you for the first time. Oh, it's you. Shouldn't you be running and screaming or some such? Grab whatever is close at hand and attack the, the undead monster. The skeleton groans and looks back to his book, frantically flipping from page to page. Yes, yes. Spend your last few minutes of life battling someone that's trying to read a book. What a splendid thought. No wonder you ridiculous creatures keep dying. You're the elf that you, I Please, saw before. I was no more an elf than you are those rags you're wearing. I had a mask, rather ingeniously designed, which allowed me to take that primitive form. A mask that was stolen by that damned witch after her little scene. Still, she'll drown with the rest of these fools, and I will simply pluck my mask from her cold, dead hands. Indeed, that makes sense. Just as sensible as getting off a sinking ship and leaving a fellow to his business. I would say good day, but it seems quite likely that you're about to die a rather terrible death, so... The skeleton shrugs casually and returns to his book. Could go in there. The door was painted recently, judging from its pungent scent. You don't recognize the symbol, but it's clearly warning you away. You press your palm against the door to open it. The wood feels neither cold nor warm, but simply gray. The color drains from your hand, and you are left numb. Now, if I open that door, something explodes and will kill us. If we were undead, we'd be able to walk in that room without issue. So, this game actually has entirely different uh, quest options for if you're undead versus a living person. Which I've always kind of appreciated. you with my knife on a stick. So the nice thing is, elemental damage only damages our magical shield, and that regenerates on its own. The dwarf 
tanks at one of the nearby boats to no avail. You said there were other people down there. We, we need to help them. You see those tentacles, kid? It's time to get the hell out of here. Kid's right. There's a ladder right over there. You're going to be the death of us, you hear? So, if we had chosen not to go back... The Magister lies on the floor. If you can walk, get to stop off the ladder. There's a... Wait! Boy broken! It is a little ironic, though, that they're prisoners, but they're carrying all these, like, magical items and grenades and shit. So if we hadn't gone back down, uh, they would have all died. She tries to speak, but can only gape as she clutches her neck, trying to stem the bleeding of a gushing wound. You but die. Froth from her mouth. She's not long for this world. And I'll probably pause here because I have a bad tender. Then I'll come back and stream some more. I have plans for you, child. Rise. Honorable Dallas, we lost a ship sailing sorcerer prisoners to Fort Joy. We assume some escaped and broke their collars. Their vile magic lured the Voidwoken. Now presumed dead. Yours faithfully into eternity. High Judge Orivan. So, it's a fun game, a little slow, but it's it's a very heavy RPG. Those void woken made short bloody work of the ship. Am I the lone survivor? It seems something, something. Wanted me alive. I thought the order would get rid of any trace of the old source king. The child has a small mirror in his hands. He holds it up at angles, inspecting his eyes, his chin, the crown of his head. He spots you, and his arms snap to his sides. I'm not supposed to talk to lizards. That's a shame, because lizards are famed storytellers. Really? Like, what kind of stories? I shall retail, retell you the tale of Isha, the famed lizard who slew the seven-headed snake of Aram. A seven-headed snake? That sounds scary. Can I hear it anyway? You want me to sure. tell the tale of Visha, 
But despite your best efforts, you notice that your knowledge of legends and monsters is somehow upsetting the child. Are you a sorcerer? One of those guys that brings the bad void things here? I am. Looks like you are too, since you've the got a collar. The child looks at you straight on, unafraid, searching your face. He lifts his mirror to his nose, closes one eye, and looks at himself again. I don't see any sauce on you or me. I guess they're wrong or crazy. They may well be wrong and crazy. <laughs> Maybe you're right. At least they don't mind where anyone goes. They know we can't leave the island. And it's a lot nicer out here than inside. Where are your they're parents? gone now. The magisters took them already. I guess now they're cured. And maybe they're waiting for me back at home. So, with that, I think we'll leave it here. I'm gonna go eat, and then I'll be back to stream some more. So, like, 45-ish minutes? So, yeah. This Thanks for watching, I hope you had fun. I know I did. I always enjoy playing this game. So, I'll be back.